Hello, zany friends, and welcome to this week's edition of Ride or Abide, where only this week we are doing books and movies Mm -hmm. and things like that that we did for the past two weeks. Mm Mm-hmm. One thing to note is that in the past, when you have listened to this on YouTube, you have seen, you know, pictures and video. We will no longer be doing that because it takes a very long time to edit that video. Yeah, basically, I work a full-time job that keeps me far away from home across the street and having a whole day where all we did is like one hour of recording and then i spend the rest of the day editing the video i've got other things to do with my life that's not to say that we won't put videos up on youtube in the future it's just that when we're doing these you know weekly wrap-up type videos it just takes far far too long to do it so if you are looking for pictures or links look down below look on my instagram zany laney and you will be able to see the things that we are talking about there instead of having the videos Mm -hmm. on the screen let us start Yes. So uh, I want to I want to start with one of the books that I did because you and I both read one book and we'll want to have some time to talk about it later. Uh, I have one other book that I read that you didn't read called mm-hmm. Ray Bearer. Mm-hmm. And I give this one five stars. We it, actually got this from Libro because mm-hmm. it was a free book like in our owl crate. So it was like a bonus audio book. And I really enjoyed it. Who, who writes Ray Bearer? His name is Jordan Ifueko. And it is part of a series. It is a very interesting fantasy story. It's about this girl who is living in a manor. She's been separated from her mother who just like shows up every now and then because the girl is one half demon, they call her, but she's really more like one half genie. And her mother's wish is to kill the emperor. So she's going to raise the daughter to go and be best friends with the prince so she can kill the prince when he becomes emperor. The world building for this book is incredible because this entire thing is Afrocentric. Everything kind of happens in an Africa-like setting. So it's a nice change from all of these very Caucasian-centered fantasies that we see these days. I really enjoyed it. So that's the one that I did solo. And now we're going to move on to Lainey's list. Yeah, so for some reason... I got this bug to just read, read, read. Plus one of the challenges that I'm doing this month in my book club includes a lot of books. So I just jumped on that and I did more audiobooks as well, which is great. I have read 10 books over the past two weeks and that would be a total of 3,614 pages. For those of you that are counting, that is, that is a lot. Like, let's just say that normally I only read like 15 books a month. And at the time of recording this, it's only like the 12th of December. So I have time. Um, She has read over three times as much as me this month. That that is In in the last two weeks. So let's talk about everything that I have read. And then we'll come back around to the book that both of us have read. Mm -hmm. So the first two books I'm going to talk about are the first two books in a series. I think it's called like Crazy Royal Love. I can't remember the name of the actual series. But the two books are... Royally Crushed and Royally Wild. It is a series by Melanie Summers. I actually did give both books four stars. And these books are about like a survivor man. He does, he has like a show, like one of those reality survivor shows, right? And his ratings are down a little bit. And so his company has done a little shake up as far as how they record his TV show. And they decide that they're going to bring in a co-host for him. And this princess of this country called, I think, Alvonia, or I don't remember what the country's called. I'm sorry, there's a lot of royal countries. But anyway, she does the trip with him for, I think it's like a certain amount of time. And there's a bonus that they get if they don't hurt themselves and if they come in at a certain time point. So that's what the first book is about. The second book is the fact that the two of them are obviously from completely different worlds. You know, he has been offered a lot of sponsorships and other jobs, whereas she 
kind of settles back into being a royal, even though the two of them had decided they were going to exit the royal world. And so it it kind of led to the two of them not being around each other for a long period of time. And of course, there are issues. Um, I did like both of them. I thought they were pretty entertaining. So if you if you're wanting to check them out, the third book is coming out next year. And we'll talk about that in our books we're excited for in 2021 video. But yeah, they were both really good. Really not Marshall's cup of tea at all. So no, no, no. it was just two people crushing on each other. I'm sorry. Uh-uh. <laughs> the other book that uh, he is actually currently listening to that I finished is called If We Were Villains. It's by ML yeah. Rio. Yeah, I've gotten an interesting start on it. So it's about a group of students who go to a Shakespearean Academy theater school and they they talk about how about Shakespeare. They do Shakespearean plays throughout most of this book, but somebody does end up dead and the circumstances surrounding it are very mysterious and also very Shakespearean. I don't know. The atmosphere in this book is great. I highly recommend the the audiobook if you're going to read this yeah. book. Because if you read, read the book, it's just not as impactful. But if you're listening to the Shakespeare and the way that the narrator does it, it's great. There are a ton of characters in this book. But the other thing that the writer does, which is very appreci- appreciated by me, is that they write it in such a way that it is like a play. Yeah. Meaning that they say the character's name and then say what the character says. So you're never confused about who is talking when. But despite that, the narrator also does a fantastic job of the characterization. So again, there's still no confusion about who is talking and what is going on in this book. So when when we first got started with this, uh, Lainey's like, okay, here, Marshall, you want to read this book? Cool. So I started. And I had actually no idea what any of it was about. I'm starting to listen to it and... There is this huge scene where all the characters are interacting with each other through Shakespearean lines. And it's like none of the lines are from the same play. They're not actually acting anything out. They're just talking to each other using those lines. And I thought it was amazing. But at the same time, I was having a really tough time continuing listening for some reason. A lot of it, I think, is actually because my brain wants to work on certain projects. And I, <laughs> and that's why like I got no books done this month. Even though I've got tons of books on my list. I would say just wait, because when you get to the end of the book, not only is the twist of who committed the murder a little twisty, there is like a second twist that kind of surprised me at the very, very end of the book. And I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I was like, wait, excuse me? So (laughs) that, I've heard a lot of good things about this book. And to me, I feel like it was justified when I finished the book, for sure. The next book I read, I'm not going to talk a lot about. It's called The 12 Days of Christmas. It's by Debbie McComer. And I gave it three stars. I read it for what we call in our group a buddy read, meaning you read it with other people. But I did not really care too much about this book. Like, it was a romance book. There's this girl who has a neighbor who's very grumpy and crotchety and rude and mean. And she decides to kill him with kindness and she writes about it in her blog so she's gonna have 12 days of killing him with kindness and being nice to him no matter how he reacts to her and as you can probably tell he starts to turn it around a little bit etc and then they start falling in love I just felt like the book was was fine but it wasn't really like my type of book I'm not really into that kind of romance I'm more into contemporary romance it, it was a little formulaic but at the same time I was just like so angry with the way that this guy was acting for no apparent reason it just turned me off to the book gotcha uh, next I read a graphic novel which for me is very unique and it was called actually you read it too what do you I say? I did I completely you forgot, forgot you read this I forgot that I read it and <laughs> it was so fun too it was called Pumpkin Heads and it's by Rainbow Rowell I gave it four stars. I thought it was fun for a graphic novel and mm-hmm. so adorable. I, I also, actually, I'm going to go further. I'm going to say it was a five star. So it's about these two people, uh, high schoolers. They're they're just about to graduate and they work at this pumpkin patch together. And this pumpkin patch is almost like a theme park. There's all these different stands, different things. But they have worked together every single year, their entire high school career, and this is the only place they know each other from. The one of them is a guy that has just been fawning over this girl at the fudge shop across the way the entire time. And the other one is a girl who has had buku exes this entire time. Like pretty much everywhere they go, they meet another ex. And now she has made it her mission 
to get this guy together with Fudge Girl. And there's a goat. There is a goat. This was really well done as far as the script goes because there's no wasted time anywhere. Mm -hmm. And you just, every inch of what these characters do is just filled with characterization. I thought that if the story was adorable, I thought that the illustrations were cute. Mm -hmm. I like the more colorful illustration, the little graphic novels. I've seen that there are some out there that are like a black and white one, and I feel like if I read those, it would be a little more of a struggle than this one, but I just, I flew through it. It took me like maybe 40 minutes to read this book. And I just thought it was just so cute. And the running gag of the goat was like making me giggle. And I mm-hmm. loved it. Yeah. It was so great. And I also really like how inclusive this book was. Mm-hmm. Because this main girl character who's had all of these exes is not what our culture would say is somebody who should have this. She is a curvier girl. And I love that. The next book I read is a book called My Lovely Wife. And it's by Samantha Downing. I read it because it had been recommended by a lot of people in my book club. And that was the prompt of the book that we were supposed to read is that it was like a team recommendation book. Uh, So the story of My Lovely Wife is told from the point of view of the husband who... I'm I'm going to see if I can kind of describe what this is really about without really giving a lot away. He is talking to a specific girl like they're on a date, but then he goes back and he sleeps with her. And so for the first part of it, and I did listen to this on an audiobook, for the first part of it, I'm like, wait, what? And then he goes home and the wife says to him, is she the one? Is, is she suitable? I don't know. I guess his answer doesn't really matter in this case. So it immediately made me think, so does the wife know he's doing this? Because she obviously knows he's with this girl. The story unravels that this couple has secrets and it does pertain to dead people. I I cannot tell you, number one, why they're stalking and picking girls. I can't tell you a lot of things about this book. But what I can tell you is that this book was fascinating. It was so weird and creepy and twisty. And with even a little, a few things I was like, yep, I can see where this is going. Even then, I was like... What is happening? This is so, it was, it was just, it was just a really well written thriller that I didn't expect. I had not read anything by Samantha Downing and I think I want to read more by her because it's a very psychological and I, that's all I can say. There is a specific reason why they're stalking these girls though. And it's not one that you actually think it's, yeah, I highly recommend there. The last quarter of this book is like a, a railroad train without the brakes. It's, it's just, wow. I actually don't know if you will like this book, but I think you would appreciate what the author did to write this book. Okay. That makes sense. All right. And now for something completely different, let's talk about Little Women because uh, I I like to read Little Women at least once a year. It's one of my favorite stories. I love watching the movies, etc. This book is 775 pages long. I did not read it. I listened to the audiobook, which therefore helped me in reading such a large book. I had every intention of reading it and not listening to the audiobook, but then I was like, eh. I got time to listen. Let's listen. So I did. And as usual, I give it four stars. If you don't know The Little Women, it is a story of four sisters and how they go through life and the time period of the war and their father is off to war. So it's basically the four uh, sisters and their mother and they befriend their next door neighbor who is the kind of a richer boy and his tutor is also part of it as well. And uh, I just love the story. I, I always forget that the father is even a part of this story. Right, because he's not a part of the story, really. I mean, like, he comes into it. He shows it, up, but... but like, I forget that he even shows up. But that's the whole, the whole plot point is kind of an underlying motive for what they have to deal with. It, they are these strong little women because they have to be, because their father isn't there. Mm-hmm. And he isn't there for a very good reason. It's not like, you know, he left them yeah. or he died. He's not there because he's fighting a war. And so that's what I think makes this story even more interesting is, yeah, he's not there. But the reason why he's not there is a very big part of the story. Yeah, because just having a dead father is one thing. But knowing that he's alive out there and still being worried about him is an extra Mm -hmm. level of like underlying tension. And Marmy does a really good job of like 
keeping that down. Mm-hmm, exactly. And the the version I've never actually read the book. Let's be honest. I've only watched <laughs> movies. The the actresses have done a very good job of portraying it from the ones that I've seen. Correct. Yes. Um, my next book that I have read is called Layla. It's by Colleen Hoover. It actually came out just a few days ago. I had got it for review, but I was late in reading it. I was actually telling Marshall about this, and he was like, "What?" Um, I gave it three stars. Okay. Colleen Hoover, I think, is noted for more like her contemporary romance novels, but I did read Verity, which is a thriller mystery as well so i know she's dipping her toe into this but this book was really kind of like uh weird to me like the way it ended up so it's a story of a guy who meets a girl who happens to be like at a wedding they meet at a wedding and she's like the sister of the bride they get together at this bed and breakfast where the wedding is they fall in love they decide to go back to his house for a couple months and basically have like this domesticated bliss situation until one day she puts a picture of them on Instagram and his ex, who is kind of a stalker, decides to come over and shoot them both. He is not as hurt as bad as Layla is. Layla is like in a coma for a while, apparently. She flatlined. They thought she was going to die, etc. But then she wakes up and everything is fine. But when she wakes up, there is a different thing about her. They think that because she got shot in the head, she has this kind of like personality change, also amnesia because of the injuries that she has sustained. So he feels like he needs to take her back to the one place where they had a lot of happiness and that is back to the bed and breakfast. And you know, if we stopped there, this would be a pretty good romance story. It I would. Feel like. But, but then didn't. <laughs> they get to the bed and breakfast, but the bed and breakfast has long been been vacated for reasons they don't know. And it's now up for sale. So they go in and the first night the husband finds some paranormal supernatural things that start happening in the house and is trying to explain it. And I'm going to stop right there because after that, it starts to get really weird. <laughs> and then it, the way that it's all explained is kind of like really <laughs> yeah. and that's all i'm gonna say about that if you like colleen hoover just give it a chance it's probably gonna be okay but honestly i i feel like i was just really let down with this book because the premise was so promising and even the paranormal stuff didn't totally take it off the rails it was kind of just how it was ending that really yeah. ruined it for me yeah. yeah, she gave me the full synopsis, and I went, oh, no, 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 <laughs> just no. No. The last book I read this month is called The Wife Upstairs. It's by Rachel Hawkins. I give it four stars. I did listen to this, I believe, on Libro, as well as getting a review copy from NetGalley. And The Wife Upstairs is a story of a girl who has been, kind of been down on her luck. She's an orphan. She's part of like the foster care system. But she's older now. I think she's like 23. And she's just trying to get by. And she starts a dog walking service in this affluent neighborhood of the area. And she, in doing so, she meets a guy whose wife one year before has disappeared in a boating accident along with her best friend. So she falls in love with this guy. Uh, they start planning a wedding and etc. But as you can probably tell from the title, the wife upstairs, guess where his wife is? She's upstairs. All right. She's in, she's locked away upstairs. Now, you might think, hey, that's kind of a big spoiler. Why would you do that? Well, the reason why she's upstairs may not be totally apparent. I'm just saying. And I'm going to leave it right there because I don't want to give any spoilers. But it's kind of cool, in my opinion. The way that they throw shade from one person to another to another about why this whole boat accident happened. Why were they dead? etc. The way that they just make the reader look one place and then look another place and then look a completely different place was good. It was good. It was not the best thriller I've read this month, but I believe that it was a pretty good thriller, so I did give it four stars. All right, here's the big one. The big one. The last one that we read together, and that is... He-Man Does Dallas. 
We did Ready Player Two by Ernest Klein. Yes, we did. There's a lot of controversy surrounding this book right now. Yeah. Um, ones that we don't totally agree with, but I would say generally as a sequel to Ready Player One, this was a really good sequel. I think it was written well. I think the new areas of the Oasis they take you to are fantastic. There is one that I got super giddy over and I was like, (laughs) this is the best planet ever. Um, I liked it so much. I think there was a completely different planet that you did that about maybe. No? Of the worlds that they went to, two of them were ones that I knew nothing about. One of them was more of a real world location. Mm -hmm. And then one of them is something that I've enjoyed and I've actually read the book. I actually read something that Wade Watts didn't. Oh, Oh, but uh, I am not as big of a fan of it as as Artemis is. So like literally I'm sitting there going, I don't, I don't remember any of that. I don't know. The problem in the world is that people are spending a lot of time in the Oasis. We know that this is true. Wade has found this technology that basically allows the things that let you connect into the Oasis to be connected into your brain so that you're you're literally just controlling it with your brain waves and you can feel and touch and taste things that in a way you never could before. There is a time limit though. You can only get in there for 12 hours and they put up safeguards. But the implementation of this technology has basically torn apart the crew from the first book because there is a difference in opinion as to whether they need to use it. And of course, something happens that might just prove that theory true. So they are set on another quest that they must complete so that all of mankind isn't a comatose bubble of people i felt like this was the next logical step for the series and at the same time when the book is over feel like the series is over like there really isn't a need for another book Mm -hmm. i agree because when they resolve all the conflict the technological level of humanity no longer has anywhere for you to go right that's worth talking about Mm -hmm. so I, i i enjoyed this book i really did and the conflict that surrounds it is primarily i feel people are not able to disconnect between a character having certain thoughts and feelings and the writer having certain thoughts and feelings right and there is a big difference when that happens i like when we're writing a story we can have a character that is the most hateful person in the universe we don't agree with them we wrote them to be hateful we probably hate them too Exactly. So. Yeah, so I gave the book five stars. I thought it was great, and I would totally read it again. I, I gave it four stars. I I felt like in some parts it was a rehash almost. Mm-hmm. It was the same kind of concept over again, but the concept is solid, so you can't hate it. Right, exactly. It's just I would have liked to see some, some extra going on. Mm-hmm. So. What are you currently reading? I'm still going through If We Were Villains. So I am currently reading A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kemmerer. It's the second book in the Curse Breaker series. The first one is... A Curse So Dark and Lonely. And the third one is A Vow So Bold and Deadly. And I'm getting all of these words mixed up. But anyway, I did get it for review and I really plan on reading that as soon as possible. But I needed to read the first two first, so that's why I'm reading the second It's so far okay. I don't like it as much as the first one. The uh, other book that I am listening to um, from Libro is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily Danforth. I know it has to do with two girls who have gone missing in the woods and there's this whole story about yellow jackets and I'm not exactly sure how that ties into it yet, but I just started that one so I haven't gotten very far. So that's what what I'm currently reading. Okay, cool. Let's talk about movies and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on a lot of these movies um, unless they're new, but even then probably not. So some of the movies that we watched over the past couple weeks that have nothing whatever to do with the holidays are Wine Country on Netflix. This is the Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, and a bunch of other people from SNL. People go to Wine Country and yeah, that's about it. Um, I finished the show Heart of Dixie, which I really liked 
thought it was cute. It has Rachel Bilson in it where she's a doctor and she has to go down south to Alabama and there's a whole cast of characters and they're fantastic and I love it. That is going to be on Netflix until December 14th and then I don't know where it's going. I finished Schitt's Creek and I'm super sad. I might have to go watch it again because it's really fascinating. I started watching Schitt's Creek and I was like, what is this show? I don't even get it. So I stopped watching it and then there was like a lot of hype about it. I'm like, fine, I'll go back to it. So I watched it again, started watching it again. And now I'm in love with the show. It got so much better. The heart is there. It's pretty much exactly what happened when I started watching Parks and Rec where I'm like, what is this? And then you just fall in love with the characters. And that that ending was just so beautiful. It was great. The ending was so great. And we watched The Secret Society of Second Born Royals on Disney+. Plus. And it is a story of the the second born royals, obviously, from different countries. They, they are recruited because apparently the second royals have superpowers. So the spares, uh, not the heirs, but the spares. And they are brought together to learn how to harness their power so that they can protect the different countries. So now they actually have a purpose instead of just being the spare. It was cute. It was fun. And then last night I watched a movie called Agatha and the Truth of Murder. It is a huh. fictionalized, yeah, it's on Netflix. And it's a fictionalized imagining of what happened during the 11 days when Agatha Christie went missing. Because, you know, not all of us saw the Doctor Who episode. That is correct. And it is kind of like a mix between Murder on the Orient Express with not as many people on the train. And, and then there were none in a country house where somebody has been murdered on a train and her significant other has been searching for three years to try to find out who killed her, has gotten all this evidence together, but no one can figure it out. So she brings it to Agatha Christie, the writer, and who is like, I'm not a detective, I'm a writer. And she's like, yes, but you can help me put these clues together. So they assemble all the people at the house and she pretends to be this like, lawyer's assistant or whatever claiming that these people are going to inherit money when in reality she's doing a murder investigation and while she's there someone else dies so now it's two murder investigations then it was a fun movie more murders thank you for the clue reference it was a really fun movie and i actually if you like agatha christie i recommend because the funniest thing about it was that she would be mourning about how people kept guessing who who did it in her books before the ending and it made her feel like she was not as good of a writer so she actually has this whole conversation with sir arthur conan doyle about it in this movie and oh. he gives her some advice but i actually like pause the movie and i turned to my husband and i said look as someone who loves thrillers what's not important is if you guess the ending what's important is that is the story is the ride that you're taking your people on so good that if they do guess the ending, they don't care. Yeah. And that's what makes a good writer. And honestly, I think that's what makes Agatha Christie one of the better writers because I think she figured that out. You know, as, as you go, as she went through her writing, I think she figured it out mm. that revealing who it is is not the worst thing in the world. And really, as the stories go on, you feel more connected to the investigator as a character right. rather than the mysteries they solve as a story. Right, exactly. You, exactly. You're more like, well, what is he going to do with this information? Mm -hmm. how, do I, like, how do I connect with this character? Right. Yeah. So that was a really good one. Like I said, it's on Netflix, so I highly recommend. So some of the holiday movies that we watched these past couple of weeks was we watched Godmothered on Disney+. Plus. It was okay. It was a story of like a wannabe godmother fairy godmother who came down to fulfill a wish um, of a little girl and finds out that the little girl is now like in her 30s and has two kids and so she's trying to figure out how she can get back to her world which is pretty much ending because nobody believes in fairy godmothers anymore it was a cute movie i don't think it was the best movie i have seen there were some parts where i was like wow this is pure cheese but the ending was very good so Take that as it is. We also watched some Stand By Daddy's Home 2, which of course is not just about the dads. It's now also about the dad's dads, the grandpas. And that's a fun movie. My husband likes watching that every year. It has John Lithgow and 
uh, one of the Wahlbergs. I'm not, at this moment, I can't remember what it is. And yeah, and Will Ferrell. And speaking of Will Ferrell, let's talk about Elf. So yeah. I don't think we need to tell you about Elf. No, you know no. Elf. We also watched the Avonlea Christmas special. My husband loves Avonlea and Anna Green Gables as well. And so we watched that, and it is also cute, very, like, cozy if you are, like, needing something with a hot cocoa to watch. This is a good one. And lastly is the movie Snow, which is kind of one of those, like, freeform holiday movies that's been out for a while. And it's about a reindeer that gets stuck in a zoo in the current time. And Nick, the Santa Claus character, uh, basically can travel through, like, doors and mirrors with his, like, snow. Yeah, and so he ends up falling in love with a girl that lives in the house where he had to enter in the magical doorway. Yeah. So that that one's cute, too. It's not one of my favorites, either, but my husband likes it, so whatever. So that's basically what we watched this week, too. I would like to shout out one lifestyle thing before we take off, and that is Book of the Month. I am not sponsored, although it would be nice if I were. But uh, this month for Book of the Month, I did want to bring up what I ended up getting in the box because I just received it yesterday and I got two books. I got In a Holidays by Christina Lauren, which I actually already have a advanced copy review in, in my net galley for like for Kindle. But I really wanted a physical copy because I liked the book a lot and I thought, oh, I would want an actual physical yeah. copy so other people could read it. And the second book is a book that I have been wanting to read for a while and that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And that is by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I've always wanted to read something by her but I haven't yet and so when I saw that this book was available on Book of the Month I just got an add-on of it so that I could read it but I've heard a lot of really good things about it. I'm not entirely sure everything that it's about so I won't talk about it until after I read it but it's supposed to be a good book. Book of the Month Club. Definitely better as a gift than Jelly of the Month Club. Definitely. So anything you want to shout out for lifestyle? For those of you who do shop at Old Navy, you probably want to go and head on down there because they're having some pretty good sales. I had to go shop for pants, and they were buy one, get one half off. Nice. And they had sport coats half off. This was great. I was not expecting to go in there and be like, I just need pants. I came out with a wardrobe. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so good about myself. (laughs) It's always helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening to our show this week. We talk about everything we're doing. Next week we're doing the books we are most excited about in 2021. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in that, make sure you stay tuned and subscribe and all that jazz. But we're sending you, especially this year, lots of love and fun and hope. And until next time. Stay zany. Bye-bye.